your tutorial for question three of the higher tier mock exam. This is the most tricky question of the three that you attempted, and it's also obviously the third, so a lot of people will have done worse in this one. Um, the reason this is harder is for the simple reason that it's the language question, which is always the one that people struggle with the most. If we just skip down to the questions here, uh, you've done these first two. These are both inference questions. How does he suggest this, and what do you learn about that? They are just find the evidence, work it out, explore it, and explain it. You can tell this one's slightly difficult because you've got examine, which is obviously a harder level word anyway, and then you've got this horrible word presents. That is your language word. So what the question is actually asking you is, find quotes about poverty, which is your topic word there, find them and explore how the language is used. And by language, we mean metaphors, similes, repetition, lists of three, facts, emotive language, negative language, anything you can find and utilize, all right? Um, because this is quite a long-winded question and it takes you a little bit more time, I have pre-annotated the things I would pick out, but you can pick out virtually anything out of the text. This is the great thing with this exam. You cannot be you know, penalised for picking quotes that aren't as good. It just means you won't be able to get the top of band three with them. But you can certainly get into the very top of band two, which is your C grade. Okay. In this, it's 10 marks, as you can see, which means you need to spend about 20 minutes on it of the hour, not that much more, and you want to be writing about a page, you would think. Okay. In this, what I've done is I have pre-written an example of how you would use, for example, I think it's the last paragraph, let's just skip down there. There it is. So here's your last paragraph, and obviously we're focusing on poverty here. This is about Abdul and, um, and how he coped with the poverty of the place. And it said, then there had been only work, work that churned so much filth into the air it turned his, sh his snot black. Work more boring than dirty, work he expected to be doing for the rest of his life. Most days, that prospect weighed on him like a sentence. Tonight, hiding from the police, it felt like a hope. Basically, work usually puts him in his place. Now it's going to kind of set him free because it gives him something to hang his life on. All right. So if I was writing this, you start off basic. I'll just show you what a sort of simple answer would be and then obviously a more detailed answer. So I've pre-written. In the final paragraph, the writer uses the repetition of the word work. They go, keyword repetition straight away to emphasise that Abdul can escape from poverty through his hard work. Okay, this is high band one, low band two. In addition, the repetition of work may imply that his work is dull and boring. That is definitely band two. We are taking our technique, repetition, quote, work, effect, dull and boring, like his life. Then, this is where you get your, your major marks. The writer reinforces this by adding a simile that the prospect weighed on him like a sentence. There it is. Implying that his life is like a jail sentence. You can interpret this how you want. And obviously, if I was writing this example myself, I would probably change the word sentence there to something else. Or that he is facing some kind of judgment as a poor person in this community. Right. So we're going to take a tiny quote, mention the technique, think about the effect. And all the time, we've got to link it to poverty. Let's try it ourselves. So let's assume... To save ourselves time, we want to pre-use a quote that we've used in either question one or question two. So I know in question one we started with midnight was closing in, so we're going to do that now. So here we go. The writer starts with the use of, and this is personification, midnight cannot close in. So what does it mean? In this case, they start with the use of personification closing in to suggest that the night and the place are, and then of course there's loads of different ways of interpreting this. Let's put um, making Abdul feel claustrophobic. Right? So you've got a really simple interpretation there. That is low band two. It's going to get you a basic C grade just by writing that. Obviously, what we want to do to make it better is then think about what it shows us about poverty. So you might want to develop it and put implies that poverty can overcome those living it and find themselves in okay so 
So all I've done is interpreted it a little bit. You're going to utilise words like implies, emphasises, reinforces. Those words are absolutely crucial to you. You need to learn maybe five of those different types of words and you need to know things like your personification. All right, let's try it again. Here we go down here. This is when Abdul goes and hides in the rubbish. Inside was carbon black, frantic with rats, and yet relieving. Look, list of three. Carbon black, frantic with rats, and yet relieving. You might write about that. 120 square feet. Okay, that's his storeroom. Well, it describes an area that's really, really cramped, and yet his storeroom is 120 square feet. It's massive. It's just full of rubbish. So what you could say is, that's the problem with poverty. It's using facts to show you that the place is horrible, but actually you can find some space within this horrible place. You just have to accept that it's in piles of stuff. Okay, so here's one technique that I want to explore with you. Let's assume that you're gonna pick this quote here. Empty water and whiskey bottles, mildewed newspapers, used tampon applicators, wadded aluminium foil, umbrellas stripped to the ribs by monsoons, broken shoelaces, yellowed Q-tips, snarl cassette tips, da 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 da, all of these things. This is listing, the writer is listing stuff. If you put, he uses lists to show you how bad it is, or he uses lists to show you how much poverty there is, or he uses lists to show you the things in poverty, it is a low band too, because you're mentioning listing, but your reason is not very good. What you want to think about is the effect of the list. So you're going to write again, Get the technique in immediately. The writer uses lists of negative rubbish items. And you can give a couple of examples. You don't want to do the whole lot. Here you go. Let's go for whiskey bottles. then the examiner knows exactly where you've got it from. You don't need to quote the whole thing. Mildewed newspapers. Notice I'm just putting a tiny bit in a bracket. So now, why do you use a list? It can be to show you the range of things. We could put that down to show it affects everything. Or to emphasise again, we're going to use that word to emphasise just how much rubbish there is. and how it can dominate your life. Right, so that's, that's the kind of response you want for band three, okay? And I've done this numerous times, and if you look down at this one, which I've already examined, here you go, something like when Abdul wants to disappear, lower down the text. Abdul needed to disappear. He took off running, but then came back home. That is at the top of the text, all right? Just up here. If you're wanting that, it suggests that poverty is something which traps people and holds them against their will. It could also imply that it limits the imagination of those within it to prevent them from escaping. Every single piece of evidence you do, you need to try and interpret, you need to try and refer to. Okay? Another technique they use is interior monologue. If you don't know what that is, that is where the writer uses the words inside the character's head, a bit like direct thought. For example, here, when he's going to be given away by um, the person who sees him going into the house, it's just here, he goes into this room. Abdul didn't mind if the Nepali boy saw him going into the hiding. This kid, Adash, was no spy for the police. That word, this kid, Adash, was no spy for the police. That's Abdul's actual words. So it uses Abdul's words and thoughts to get the attitudes of the community across clearly and succinctly. Each time, what's the technique? What's the effect? What's the technique? What's the effect? So something like this, scavengers, right? That's a noun. Darted, crumpled, tossed from cars, right? Those kind of things, right? Look, look at that, crumpled cigarette packs. So you've got adjectives, you've got Verbs, tossed from cars, it suggests that rubbish has been thrown around, which suggests that poverty is something that leads you not to care about what's going on around you. Um, look at the description of the people there. Each evening they return down the slum road with sacks of garbage on their backs like a procession of broken-toothed, profit-minded Santas. 
the like would tell you it's a simile. Santa's, a bit of an odd one to use, explore that. Is that taking a cultural reference and twisting it? Is it making them seem negative? There are loads and loads and loads of things you could do. Look again up here. Abdul and his neighbours were squatting on land that belonged to the airport's authority. The verb, squatting. All you need to do is mention verb. Encircling Anawadi. Right, that suggests they're being surrounded with five extravagant hotels. So the poor area is surrounded by the rich area. The villages had been airdropped into gaps between elegant modernities. Airdropped. Even if you don't know what elegant modernities means, you know they've been dropped into it like nobody cares about them. The verb shows they don't care. And here's a metaphor. Everything around us is roses and we're the muck in between. Loads of students last year picked that up and picked up the fact that it's clearly showing that poverty makes you feel bad about the area you live in and the rich area is described as roses. As long as you are giving a technique and explaining it, you cannot fail to get less than about 6 out of 10. The minute you start exploring it, like we did in our example here, there, you are going to get 7, 8 or 9, and that is what you want to aim 